uh, and I'm not at home. So my environment might be, uh, have some background sounds. Uh, and just to let you in on it, I'm, I, I uh, volunteer at a dog rescue. So if you hear a little whining and barking in the background, just let that be background sounds. Uh, just, uh, just let it be another uh, sound. Nothing to feel distracted by or do anything about. So our topic tonight is self-compassion. Maybe just notice how that even lands as I say those words, self-compassion. I'm going to say a little bit about self-compassion from this perspective, and then we'll do a practice together. And the invitation is simply to, to follow along as, as best you can. If there's anything that mm, kind of rubs you the wrong way, just let it go. I know for myself in developing what we might call the wholesome qualities like loving kindness and compassion, that was certainly challenging. Uh, I was feeling those practices were a little too warm and fuzzy. After all, I am from New Jersey. Uh, but what I learned is that mindfulness isn't just about paying attention. It includes noticing what causes our suffering and learning how we might reduce our own suffering. So in a traditional sense, compassion might be described as the wish for freedom of suffering. Now, who doesn't have that wish? Would you like to be free from suffering? As you drop that question in, just notice what splashes up. Would you like to be free from suffering? So the practice we'll be doing tonight was developed by a researcher named Kristen Neff. And after the session, we can certainly let you know more about where you could find out about Kristen Neff and even a link to this guided practice. And I see Jim, I think Jim is holding up a book. It might be uh, the Self-Compassion Workbook. Yeah, so it's really great to know that that's a resource out there. So self-compassion isn't something that we're born with, it's something we can develop. And the practice we're about to engage in inclines the mind towards self-compassion. There's three steps. The first step is simply validating our own suffering, recognizing it. The second step is knowing that we're not alone, that suffering is part of being human, and that others feel the same way that we do. The third step is then offering some kind and caring words to ourselves. And this is where it gets to be a little bit more personalized because it's important to find words that fit for you. So I'll offer some suggestions tonight, but feel free to create your own phrases. Maybe what you most would like to hear or need to hear. Okay, so let's go ahead and set yourself up for a, a meditation. And um, I like to recommend uh, sitting, but it's fine to make any adjustments that would support you in being present. So you might be lying down, you might be standing up. 
And whatever position you find yourself in, just letting your attention scan through the body and invite a sense of ease and comfort. And noticing the places where the body makes contact with the floor. So sensations of touch or pressure, perhaps noticing how the soles of the feet make contact with the floor. Or maybe the back body. You might choose to close your eyes or take a soft downward gaze. And as we begin becoming aware of the fact that breathing is happening, we don't have to do anything. Where do you most distinctly feel the breath? It might be the nostrils. Perhaps the chest. Or maybe the abdomen, the low belly. Finding the place in your body where you most distinctly Feel the breath and letting your attention rest right there. Now, of course, from time to time, you'll notice that your mind has wandered. That's natural. As soon as you become aware of this, you're already back. And you can choose to bring your attention right back to the body right back to the breath. So breathing in and breathing out moment by moment. Seeing when the mind wanders. Coming back and beginning again. Inviting an inner settling. And as you're ready now, bringing to mind some source of struggle or suffering. Most of us don't have to look too far. It could be a pain, it could be something in your life that's bothering you or troubling you. Maybe best not to piss, pick the biggest uh, source of suffering. That's just something that's troubling you, that's bothering you. And as you bring it to mind, just recognize the inherent uh, the, the personal suffering that you experience. And you might imagine what you would say to a dear friend. You might say, oh, this is hard. Oh, that hurts, that must hurt. So in your own way, finding the words simply to validate this is hard this is painful oh there's suffering here and breathing in and breathing out with these words of validation recognizing the truth in your experience And as best you can, noticing how that feels to hear those words of validation. Oh, this is hard. Ouch, this hurts. Good. 
And yes, this is hard, this hurts. But we also know that we're not alone. Other people feel this way too. In fact, suffering, it's part of being human. It's part of our experience. So maybe saying to yourself, I'm not alone. Other people feel this way too. And not just saying the words mechanically, but with some sense of sincerity and noticing how it lands in you as you say this to yourself. I'm not alone. Other people feel this way too. And now that we've recognized that we have some suffering, we've kind of tapped into what we might call common humanity, that this is part of being human. We can now offer ourselves some gentle words of kindness or care. Oh, may I meet this, may I meet this pain with a sense of ease. I can be kind to myself, even in the face of this. I'm doing the best I can. I can know peace in the midst of this. So here, some inner listening. Really tuning in to what you would like or what you need to hear in terms of caring or kindness. I am more than my struggles. I'm doing the best I can. May I know peace in the midst of this. And then I'd like to add a little bit more, which is supportive touch. Now we know that touch helps to regulate the nervous system. So you can try, if it feels okay for you, maybe put one hand on your heart. If that doesn't work for you, just let your palms be flat on the tops of your legs. And really zooming in now to the weight of the hand. And maybe the temperature of the hand. And we'll move through the phrases just a couple more times. And if there's one place you'd like to hang out for a while, feel free. But really sensing into the weight, the support, the temperature of the hands or hand. Oh, this is hard. I'm not alone. I care. I care for myself. I'm 
staying with it as best you can and then maybe adding some caring phrases that feel right to you. I can find peace in the midst of this. In the midst of it all, I can find peace. Maybe it's just this breath. Right now, just feeling this breath. So whatever struggle, pain, or suffering, it's the recognition of this is hard, this hurts. This is suffering. We don't have to pretend it's not there or minimize or deny it. We can recognize it. And with that, no, this is, this is part of being human. I'm not alone. And that's kind of caring. Oh, can I care for myself with kindness? May I take care of myself with kindness? May I be kind to myself even in the face of this challenge. Just noticing how that feeling of kindness lands. We know that feelings can't be forced, so doing the best you can with it. And breathing in, breathing out with this sense of caring and kindness. And one last time together, just a recognition, envisioning in your mind's eye, whatever it is for you, mm, this is suffering. Yeah, this is hard. This is, this is a struggle for me. And then sensing that realization, I'm not alone. Other people feel this way too. People we know, people we don't know, people nearby, people far away. And then adding some words of kindness. May I care for myself with kindness. May I be kind to myself regardless of the circumstance. And maybe even breathing in, breathing out with the weight of the hands. Feeling the touch, the movement, just as a sense of support.
And now letting go of the phrases and just seeing if there's any impressions of kindness there. When you're feeling kindness, where does it show up in your body? This kindness feel tight and contracted? Or does it feel open and expansive? And where does kindness show up? Any sensations in the front body? Or maybe even in the face. And if you're feeling kindness, maybe even saying to yourself, kindness feels like this. And if that's not what's there for you, letting that be okay. That's just how it is right now. So breathing in and breathing out as best you can, tapping into any kindness that might be available. Knowing that our feelings change moment by moment. And that self-compassion is, it's a skill. It's a quality that we can develop by practicing over time. And just like self-compassion is a skill, sometimes I think that kindness is a skill that we can develop. Being kind to ourselves, being kind to others. So, opening to the words of this poem. The poem is entitled, Small Kindnesses. I've been thinking about the way when you walk down a crowded aisle, people pull in their legs or let you by. Or how strangers still say bless you when someone sneezes a leftover from the bluebonic plague. Don't die, we are saying. And sometimes when you spill lemons from your grocery bag, someone else will help you pick them up. Mostly, we don't want to harm each other. We want to be handed our cup of hot coffee and to say to the person handling it, thank you. We want to smile back at them and for them to smile at us. Maybe for the waitress to call us honey when she sets down that bowl of clam chowder and for the driver in the red pickup truck to let us pass. We have so little of each other, so far from tribe and fire, all in these brief moments of exchange. What if they are the true dwelling of the holy, these fleeting temples, these moments of kindness, we make together when we say, here, have my seat. 
Oh, you go first. I like your hat. So small kindnesses, small kindnesses that we can show to ourselves and to others. Now just checking in now, noticing how you're feeling in your body, sensing the quality of your mind state, and any emotions that are present. In a moment, we'll end our practice for this evening, but just knowing that you can take short moments many times throughout the day just to take a little kindness break. You know, if you're having problems with technology or your day's not going the way you want it to do, oh, this is hard. This happens to other people too. I'm not alone. Yeah, just a reminder. I'm doing the best I can. So as you're ready now, opening out to your surroundings. So if your eyes have been closed, opening the eyes and maybe gazing around your room a little bit. If you're on camera, you might peek in to see some of the other faces. And just seeing for yourself right now, what's here? So after we do a practice, it's nice to see the results of the practice. The results might show up now, they could show up later, they might show up at some other time in the future. So I would recommend that you check out, uh, this is called The Compassion Break by uh, Christina Feldman and, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Kristen Neff. And if you Google it, I'm sure you can find a short guided uh, practice if you wanted one. Um, and the poem is called Small Kindnesses. Also, if you Google small kindnesses, you would uh, be able to find that as well. So it's um, so nice to uh, join in with everyone tonight. If it is taking a moment to see that you're not alone, even though you might be alone in your dwelling wherever you are on the planet, that here we are. Uh, we're together, practicing together. Okay, and just noticing the chat. Thank you so much for your comments. And uh, I look forward to being with you.